Hey, everyone, and welcome to Chef AJ Live. I'm your host, Chef AJ, and this is where I introduce you to amazing people like you who are doing great things in the world that I think you should know about. Well, today is, is it only the first Friday of the month? I guess it is, which means it's time for Plant Fueled with Dr. Nikki Davis. I recently had the pleasure of spending almost an entire week with her and her colleagues from Love Life Telehealth. They were so kind. They sent me, saved me seats at their table. They welcomed me as if I was one of them. They even, most of them took my, my three hour uh, workshop, which was an extra fee. It was so wonderful getting to know them. And we ate together and the food at the Marriott was outstanding, especially because, you know, they're not used to serving 600 people vegan, let alone SOS free. But what we started to notice as we got a little bit chummy with the chefs is as delicious as it was, their secret for taking out the oil and the salt was using lots and lots of fat, like in everything. Like they would share the recipes, two cups of cashew cream, a cup of tahini like in the same recipe. And I said, boy, is there a way we can make this lower in fat? And actually they did. They used some of my tips and tricks. And Dr. Davis is going to do some of those right now. So please welcome her to the show. She's going to be making her version of the Marriott's warm curry tomato bisque, some air fried tofu and brown rice. Hi, it's so good to see you, AJ. It's, it's funny because I feel like we've been friends because we've been doing this Zoom thing for so long. And we met in person that one time back in like, gosh, it was probably like 2018 or something. Um, but getting to spend some time with you at the conference is really nice. I feel like we actually got to know each other a little bit better. And it was just really nice to sit down and eat some yummy food with you. Yeah, and it was so fun. You guys were so delightful, you and Amy in my cooking class. And it was when we took those little excursions, you know, out of out of the hotel to that wonderful store with all the Mexican art. It was just such a fun time. Yeah, it was so much fun. And the food at this hotel was amazing. And I don't, do you remember the chef's names? Yes, Paul and... I'll get the other one in a minute. Uh, yeah, definitely. He was supposed to come on the show and then he's, you know, he's, he's, he's busy. Let me see. Paul, one yeah. of them Paul. And oh gosh, I hope they're not watching. They're probably not. They <laughs> were so uh, yeah. Paul was one. And what was the other one's name? Oh, they were great though. They were just, they I know were they were so nice and they made such delicious food and they were really accommodating because we were asking about how can we make this thing a little bit lower in fat and and actually, it was your idea, AJ, to swap out the cashew cream for steamed cauliflower in this soup. So um, so this is a soup that they served to us, this curried tomato bisque. Um, but And I ate it as a soup, and all of us just loved it. We thought it was amazing. But I AJ- I just used it as a yes, sauce for the rice. I know. So you put it over the top of rice, and I thought, well, that's a great idea, because it's like a really delicious sauce too. So that's kind of what I've decided that I want to make today is this soup, but using it as a sauce over rice and air fried tofu. Uh, so I have not made this soup before. So we are going to do this together and we will just cross our fingers and hope that it works out. So <laughs> that's funny. You're, you're very <laughs> brave to do it. Try it the first time on the air. Right. I mean, you know, if I'm going to do that, why not? why not on Chef AJ's show, right? We just have fun here. So um, so the first thing I'm going to do is uh, saute onions, ginger, garlic, and jalapenos. Uh, and this recipe is in the show notes, so you can follow along. Um, but basically, we've got, let's see, so a quarter cup of diced red onions, a tablespoon of minced garlic, a tablespoon of fresh ginger, two diced jalapenos with the seeds removed. Um, I only did one because I wanted mine a little less spicy. Uh, and this is what I used for the, the grated, I just used grated ginger. And then I used some ready to go minced garlic. You're, you're like me, AJ. You like know, to keep you know, simple especially, too. Especially, you know, the older I get and the busier I get, I just can't, I can't do it the old chefy chef way, especially now that they have the convenience things. The ginger, I buy them in little frozen cubes at Trader Joe's and there's nothing in them and you just pop a little cube out. Oh, okay. I'm a Trader Joe's person, so I will look for those. Um, but this is what I'm going to be adding. So this has got the diced onions, the garlic, the ginger, the jalapeno. And then I'm also putting in a little bit of uh, vegetable stock and some curry powder. And um, the curry powder, I think is just Frontier Co-op. I, I can't remember if that's from Whole Foods or, um, but, 
and then just a little bit of uh, low sodium vegetable stock. So I'm going to take uh, Dr. this. Dr. Davis, I'm sorry to yeah. interrupt. But people are asking your, your shirt. It's adorable. Is that a caricature of you? Like a, like, a, like is Judy Jetson or something? I know. I was kind of waiting to see if anybody would, would notice. So um, there is a, a TV show called um, Lego Masters. And it's really fun. It's all these uh, people who go, you know, do this kind of uh, competition show where they make amazing Lego creations. And there was a guy on the show wearing this shirt and it and you notice it says my name on it spelled right n-i-k-i with one k uh and so i thought that is amazing and i need to have that shirt and so it's a company called pop killer and um it just so happened i think that nikki n-i-k-i might even be like nike the brand nike in japan or something i'm not sure but anyway i i had to have it right it has my name on it it's very cool <laughs> and it's pink and you know it's fun like 80s it. vibe. It kind of almost looked like Flintstones to me in a little bit. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But it's got, you know, it's got like a cell phone on there and a boom box and, oh, and a floppy disk. So it's kind of, you know, back to when I was in middle school. It was the Plantrition Conference the first time all you uh, Love Life telehealth doctors actually were together in person? Uh, no, so we've we got together actually the year before at the same conference. So um, yeah, nice. It was it was so much fun that that a lot of us ended up doing it again this year. Nice. All right, so I'm just gonna start heating that up, letting that cook, and it. I mean, even without having started cooking it yet, it smells amazing in here with that curry. Uh, and the onions too, and the garlic and the ginger. I mean, it's all like really fragrant stuff that you're putting together. Um, so basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna take that um, and it just says to just basically cook it until it's soft and fragrant. And then you deglaze the pan, sorry, deglaze the pan. And, and I did not put that in my notes because I don't know what deglazing is. I assume that it just means that whatever is stuck in the pan, when you put the tomatoes, um, tomato juice in, that it kind of takes everything off of the pan. But do you know, AJ, what that means? Yeah, I, I think that is exactly right. Like maybe like if you're sauteing like um, onion or something, you know how there's like little bits. And so it, 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 what it means is it's just adding some liquid to a hot pan, which allows all of the little caramelized bits that are sticking to the bottom to release. So you got it. it. Yep. Okay. So, um, so we'll do that with tomato juice. And I just bought, um, it's just an organic tomato juice. So kind of basic. Uh, the stock that I ended up using is a Pacific organic low sodium vegetable broth. Um, the other ingredients that'll go in this are Roma tomatoes. So I've got eight of these Roma tomatoes uh, and, oh, and nutritional yeast. And actually I was wondering if you did okay. Cause I know you said that you can't really have this. Um, I was wondering if you did okay with it though, because it was in your soup from the yeah, conference. Yeah, I, I think it's just, I can have small amounts, but you know, yeah. like sometimes these recipes, like will have just huge cupfuls and and then you eat a lot of it, but a little bit, it's like a sprinkle. Yeah. 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 To be okay. With just a small amount. Yeah. Well, good. All right. Yeah. This is starting to heat up and um, let's see. Oh, and so then one of the things that, and I mentioned this earlier, but one of the things that the recipe called for was two cups of cashew cream. So if you want this to be a little bit more decadent, um, you could do that for maybe a special occasion. And you basically just are going to soak the cashews overnight um, blend them up. And I think uh, the chef and he said to add like a little bit of water just to make it a little bit, um, you know, a little less thick. And uh, instead of using that, like chef AJ had mentioned, we are going to do steamed cauliflower. So the cauliflower that I used is Trader Joe's. I mean, it's one of my favorite places, but it's just a rainbow cauliflower. I just happen to have it in my freezer already. Um, cause it's something that you can easily heat up. And I used uh, my microwave steamer to steam it up and it's, and I know you use this too, AJ. I so this love is like, that. I, isn't it great? I love it. And so it's the <laughs> Pampered Chef um, microwave steamer. Uh, I did include a link for this on uh, the show notes if you're interested, 
but it's pretty inexpensive. And I mean, it just steamed them right up in the microwave. It was really easy. I think I ended up doing it for nine minutes. So it doesn't take too much time. And then I actually already had some rice uh, in my fridge. Uh, so this is just like a jasmine rice that I'm gonna do um, for the bottom. Normally I do brown rice, but today we, because I already had some rice, I decided to just use what I had. So, all right, we're gonna let this keep going a little bit here. How do you like to cook your rice in general? So I have a, a rice cooker that I use that's a ceramic uh, jar uh, that it cooks in and I just love how it turns out. So it's, um, and actually I think I have a link to it on my website. So if you go to drdavis.com and go to store, I have some Amazon affiliate links on there and um, I put that one on there just because I've had that for over 10 years probably and it just makes the best rice. I wow. can't remember the brand, but, um, but yeah, I just, I like that it cooks it in ceramic, a ceramic dish. Very cool. And this is smelling so good. I'm just gonna add a little bit more vegetable broth. Uh, so you got to hang out with some of my favorite people over at True North recently, I saw. I know, Dr. Clapper was my roommate. It was so cool. <laughs> Who gets to say that? Dr. Clapper was my roommate. I know, it's so fun. It was so fun. We did a lot of puzzles while we were there. Really? Not, yeah, I, you know, we, we had another roommate, nice guy named Bob, and we, we did a lot of, we got, I think I got six puzzles, six crossword puzzles done. Wow. Yeah. Well, that's fun. Yeah, I love it there. Um, you well, know, back when I got to intern there for a month, it was it was just amazing to get to see see people doing really well and and getting healthy. How many doctors are there at Love Life Health Telehealth now? Yeah, um, we have 10, 10 doctors, and um, we cover all fifty states in DC. Um, there's and we have a very, we have varied backgrounds. So it's actually um, really nice. You can go onto the Love Life website. So it's love.life slash telehealth. And you can look at all the bios of all the doctors. And, you know, we've got doctors that are, have got some uh, education on more alternative type functional medicine. We have doctors who, um, you know, have worked in the ER. We've got an OBGYN, um, you know, we've got family docs. So it's, it's really nice because you can look to see, well, what, what does this have, doctor have going on and um, what's kind of their background and, and decide who you want to see. Um, now, if you're living in somewhere like California, like you, um, you're going to have a, you know, the pick because most of us are licensed there. If you live somewhere where there, uh, we don't have a lot of doctor's license, so you might have, get like one or two choices, but, but they're all great. Oh, we have a chef doctor. Oh yeah, Colin Zoo. Colin Zoo. Yeah, he's he'll be on tomorrow at nine a.m. making sir yeah. minestrone. Oh, yum! All right, so that is smelling really, really good. So now what I'm going to do is deglaze the pan. Now that we know what that means. <laughs> <laughs> so this is just two cups of tomato juice, and it definitely. I mean, you could see there was stuff sticking in there. So deglazing is a good idea. Get all the yumminess. Honeybee is saying in, in Miami, there's a restaurant or a vegan restaurant called Love Life. I wonder if that's owned by the same people because I believe there's one in Los Angeles now too. Uh, yes, it is actually. So there's, uh, there's the restaurant in Florida that I believe that this, you know, this company that was started co-started by John Mackey, who was the CEO of Whole Foods. Um, he, I think he bought that restaurant and then used the name of the restaurant to create this bigger business that includes the telehealth portion that, that we're part of. And then they did open up another restaurant in LA. So I haven't been there yet. I'm excited to try it though. It must be fun to be able to just buy a restaurant, you know? <laughs> right. So Stephanie asks, should we be consuming nutritional yeast in fortified or non-fortified form? 
Um, honestly, I don't think it really matters. If you're someone who's plant-based, uh, then you want to be taking a B12 supplement and fortified just means that they're putting B12 in it to give you extra B12. Um, but I, I recommend that you just always take a supplement every day and so that you don't have to worry about trying to get it through your food. So it doesn't really matter. All right. Okay. This soup smells so, so good. All right. So now what I'm going to do is add these Roma tomatoes. And then we're going to let those cook for a little bit. I love that it uses a lot of fresh tomatoes, this recipe. All right, uh, let's see. I'll turn it up just a little bit here. Let it start bubbling. And uh, once we get that to start bubbling, then we will put in the nutritional yeast and the cauliflower. And then once those get mixed in, um, that's pretty much everything. And then um, they recommend blending it so that you have a nice bisque that's been blended. Um, so let's see, I'm gonna start kind of just building this plate while that's going. And whenever you have a chance, the question was sent in in advance for you. Oh, sure. Okay, yeah, anytime. Just, okay, great. It is from Anne, and she said, we are told that phytoestrogens in soy can block our estrogen receptors and have a protective effect against breast, ovarian, and uterine cancers. Does this receptor blocking action of soy not have a negative effect on bone density, which is protected by the presence of estrogen? Right. Um, so no. Um, as far as I know, it, it does not affect bone density. Um, and actually soy has been shown to be not only beneficial for helping, you know, lower your risk of breast cancer, um, but it, it also is helpful for women who are in menopause and have menopausal symptoms. Um, so soy overall is actually really, um, really great. And, um, and I wouldn't, I wouldn't not eat it because you're worried about bone density. There's, I have not heard anything about that. Thank you. And I air fried some tofu already. So the way that I do my tofu, now you could get fancy with it and spice it up and things like that. But what I end up doing is I just cut it into these little, little square pieces. I'll show you. So it's just like these little cubes. Um, so I don't know, about an inch block, little cubes. You so I any, cut those up. Oh, go ahead. Any preferred type of tofu? Uh, no, not necessarily. Firm or extra firm. Good. Uh, and basically what I do is I just cut it up like that. I don't season it or anything like that. I just stick it in my air fryer. Uh, this is the Breville air fryer. and I love it. I've had it for a long time. I use it every day, uh, mostly for potatoes, tofu, making corn chips or, or corn tortillas, crispy for tostadas. Um, it's, it's just really good. And, you know, it's just a toaster oven too, so you can use it to toast things up. Um, but then you just put those out. I put them out on a parchment sheet and you just have to make sure they're not touching. And then it's about 400 degrees at, uh, for about 20 minutes, uh, air frying, air fry mode. And so, and they come out in these like nice little crispy uh, tofu pieces. And, you know, my 10 year old son just loves it. Uh, he's, he's a big fan of um, the, the crispy tofu. So, and actually he'll eat tofu raw too. Wow. It's, I know, I know it's not really raw, but I'll have a block of tofu out that I'm getting ready, you know, that I've been starting to cut up and he just comes by and just snags a couple of pieces. I'm like, ugh, I don't think I would enjoy that, but <laughs> that's what he likes. 
All right. Uh, so this is just kind of my base. What I'm going to have on the bottom is this rice, leftover rice and the crispy tofu. And then uh, once this is cooking a little bit longer, then we're going to add in that uh, nutritional yeast and the cauliflower. So let's see, the nutritional yeast is two tablespoons. And this is just Bob's Red Mill that I found. Um, I kind of wish that they sold it in bigger bags because we go through it a lot quicker than this tiny little bag. But you can get it bulk. Um, we've got a Sprouts nearby that does bulk, a lot of bulk. So you do that. All right, so I said two tablespoons, right? So I'm gonna add that in there. Here's a question I'm not sure if you know the answer to that was sent in. Um, when you make homemade oat, oat milk, you know, mm -hmm. and the leftover pulp, do you know if there's any nutritious nutrition left in it? Is it still nutritious, the pulp from leftover plant milks, especially oat milk? Yeah, it would be um, because it's got fiber, right? That, that's the fiber. The pulp is the fiber. So fiber in and of itself is nutritious. Not necessarily the fiber. The fiber is something that you don't, your body itself doesn't utilize, but it feeds your gut bacteria. So it's important that way to make your gut bacteria happy. Uh, it's better for you. So there's that part of it. And then um, the fiber also can be attached to nutrients. So if there are any phytonutrients that sometimes gets attached to the fiber. So it's the same reason that I don't usually recommend juicing because even though you're taking out this fiber, the fiber also brings with it nutrition. So same thing with making oat milk. It's a good alternative to milk, definitely. And I use oat milk and I love it, um, but you are gonna be removing a little bit of nutrition within that fiber. Interesting. A lot of people yeah. use it in recipes leftover pulp, you know, for, I mean, I know I do when I teach at Rancho La Puerta, when we make our plant milks, especially like nut milks, we use it like, you know, in recipes. Yeah. And yeah, you definitely could. I mean, I can see how you could add that. I mean, I don't know, maybe even muffins or something like that. You could bake with it. Yeah. I and mean, we like, we'll take like the a almond thickener. Milk. Yeah. Well, like for instance, the pulp left over from almond milk will make like truffles or a dessert recipe or a pie crust, for example. Oh, that's a great idea. Yeah. That's a really good idea. Um, okay. So now I'm going to add in the cauliflower and that is going to be everything for the soup, which we're going to use as just a sauce because AJ has very good ideas. <laughs> Okay, so and it's so it's supposed to be two cups of cashew cream. So I figured pretty close if I do about two cups of, of this steamed broccoli, but you know, we might need a little bit more than that. That's what's gonna make it creamy. Mm-hmm, exactly. And I just love these little, I don't know if you can see from there, but these little purple cauliflowers. So pretty. Yeah. How do they get it purple though? People worry. I, I my husband asked me this today that, that cauliflower maybe isn't as nutritious as other green vegetables because it's not green, but it is. It's one of the crucifers, isn't it? Uh huh. It's cruciferous, so yeah, it's very healthy. Um, but yeah, I I always look for things that are a little bit more colorful. Uh, I think you know, eating just regular cauliflower that's white is fine. But if you can find it green and purple and orange, why not? You're just going to get some extra phytonutrients there. Got a question for you. Hold on. I just, yeah. Yeah. This is from, sorry, close my phone screen. Here we go. Uh, from Victoria, and it's Dr. Davis, for the past three decades, I have eaten as vegetarian. And then about three years ago, I started eliminating dairy, eggs, oil, salt, sugar, but I don't seem to have this exuberant amount of energy and lack of and lack of fatigue. Many people express 
they have once they start eating this way. What would be your suggestions to increase my energy? She doesn't give any other information like her age or other things that I yeah. think are important. Well, and, and that's tricky because you're right. You need, you definitely need more of a background. Um, there are lots of things that can cause fatigue. Fatigue is one of the most common complaints that people have when they go to see their doctor. And there are lots of things that can affect that. Um, you know, if you're anemic, if your iron's low, if your B12 is low, um, it, you know, if you're not getting enough sleep, maybe you think you're getting enough sleep, but if you have sleep apnea that's not diagnosed, that could make you feel fatigued without even really realizing that you're not getting good sleep. So you need to, I would suggest that if, if the diet has not fixed that problem for you to go and see someone who can do a good workup and figure out why you're feeling that way. Perfect. Thank you. Yeah. We need mm -hmm. a lot more information and, you know, if she can't find a plant-based doctor where she lives, there's 10 of you at Love Life Telehealth and we have other, you know, virtual doctors on the show as well. Yep. <laughs> It's important though, I think, to get a plant-based doctor when you're plant-based, even if it's just as a, uh, like an, like an advisory position. Yeah. Well, that's actually what my, one of my patients calls me his advisory doctor. Whenever he goes to see his other doctors, oh, she's my advisory doctor. Um, but I think, you know, more than that, it's, it's really nice to have someone who supports you in your lifestyle. You want to have a smart doctor, somebody who can tell you what's going on, order the right tests, um, give you good advice. But there's something to be said for a doctor who completely supports you in what you're doing and isn't talking down to you about your dietary choices uh, and understands them and actually is very excited that you're doing that. And so it's, I think it is really nice as someone who eats plant exclusive to have somebody in your you know, in your court that can just be supportive of your overall life and your overall health. Mona says, what's the difference between an MD and a DO? So they're both doctors. Um, they both go to the same medical school. A DO is a doctor of osteopathy, a medical doctor or an MD is a medical doctor. If you are a doctor of osteopathy, you get extra education. So it's above and beyond what you would get as an MD. And it's just based on uh, osteopathic manipulation for the most part. So they're learning this technique that, um, that they use. If you've ever had a manipulation done by a DO, then you know, but they're basically trained in, in how to help with muscles and bones and, you know, lymphatic your lymphatic system and all those things. And so they, they're very hands-on. Um, and I, I think they're great. I mean, if, if I, if I would have had a close school by me that had a DO option, I may have ended up going that route. I think it's, I think it's really great. Nice. All right. And I'm going to, so this is starting to get really nice and soft. Um, I probably should let it go a little bit longer, but I'm just, just so that you guys can kind of see the process and, and how it all works. I'm going to throw this in the blender and I'm a little nervous because I, my, my blender, I use mostly for smoothies. I don't really make soup in my blender. So I'm hoping that it goes okay, <laughs> but I'm going to kind of just show you what this looks like so far. You can hopefully see it. There you go. So looking good. Looks good. So gonna, do you think we can do yeah. this recipe? Since this is your first time making it, you don't probably know the answer, but I wonder if we could do it in the Instant Pot. Well, it's funny that you mentioned that because this morning I thought, why, you know, that probably would go well in the Instant Pot. It would be something that you could very easily just throw everything in, pull it out, throw it in the blender. I think that that would be very, very easy thing to do. So yeah, I think that's, that is a fantastic idea. All right, this is where I need a helper. This is, this is a little tricky. Yeah, wait till your kid gets home from school next time. Yeah, I know. Huh? I'm just gonna get some of these big pieces out first.
Oh my gosh, it smells so good. I think it's just a combination of all these delicious ingredients. You know, I mean, garlic in and of itself just smells amazing, but then you add all the other stuff, the ginger and the curry, the onions. Okay. All right. So are you going to put it over the, the rice and the tofu? Yes, Stephanie. I am. Recipe. Stephanie, please look at the show notes. The show notes are, if you go look right below the YouTube video where you're watching this, it, sometimes it doesn't, it says the words more, click it, the box will expand. It's in there. Maybe, if you don't see it, maybe just refresh your screen. I'm just going to let this blend for a minute. And I use the Blendtec blender. I really like it. Um, this one is nice because it has the cover, so it's not as loud. But you definitely don't need this fancy of one. Uh, but I do have a link uh, to if you're interested in buying this blender too. Okay. I don't know. That looks right. Doesn't that look like what we had? This it's such I mean, a beautiful well, even, color. Even without the cashew cream, you know, it's nice. It's this nice creamy color um, from the cauliflower. Yeah, it thickens it too. Mm -hmm. Oh, it smells so good. All right. So maybe I'll show you guys this. I'm a little bit far away. So I've got my rice and my air fried tofu, and we are just going to sauce this up. Oh, it looks delicious. And it's around lunchtime now too. I know. And look at how much I have left. Like this is going to last for a while. So let's give it a try. I got to send this video to chef Paul and show him what you did. Yes, that would be great. It's going to be hot. Okay. Just give me a second here. I don't want to burn my mouth. Mm. Oh, it's spicy. It's good. Oh. Um, I'm glad I only put in the one jalapeno. Um, it's like perfect amount of spice. So yum. Wow. That's amazing. You know, we, he did, he gave us the, uh, the, uh, the recipe for that balsamic we liked, you know, that had yeah. all, the, all the extra stuff. And then he made it the next day with my suggestion and, and it was just as good. I mean, you know, it was delicious. Yeah. Yeah. I know. Well, it's just nice to have an option. We, we knew that it was already delicious. And then to be able to add cauliflower for that creaminess to thicken it up, um, it's just a really nice, because then you can eat it every single day. Right. Whereas Absolutely. if, if I knew this had a lot of cashew cream in it, I would not want to eat it every day, but this is something that you could easily eat every single day and really good as a soup too. So this could be something that would be really fun for fall and holidays too. I think it's a really nice recipe for that. Where you know it's soup, soup season now. That's great. I wonder like, you know, I was thinking like would it be beneficial to add like some sun-dried tomatoes to it just to give it mm. more, maybe more, I don't know, that je ne sais quoi like, because you know when you're not using salt or something like that, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, not a bad idea. Nice. Well this was very, very fun. I know I had a lot of fun and I'm, I'm just excited to eat this whole plate of food. <laughs> I, I won't keep you then. And um, <laughs> next month is November. So if you got any uh, Thanksgiving ideas, maybe you can do something. What are you doing for Halloween? I mean, what do you do? do you, what do you hand out? For example, we usually hand out little toys. Um, yeah, that's, that's usually what we do. Um, I usually don't hand out any food, um, but we go trick or treating. So my son's still young enough that he enjoys doing that. What's he going to be for Halloween? Well, it, it's funny. So last year he was a pickle. And this year. <laughs> but this, so he wasn't salt free then. <laughs> <laughs> right. This year he, um, he was going to be 
like a Star Wars character or the Mandalorian or something like that. And then he changed his mind and now he wants to be a veggie burger. That's funny. So, so each each year he's a different food. That's adorable. I mean, I'm pretty proud. <laughs> Thank you. I hope he, you think he'll enjoy the soup. Will be too oh, I know he will. I'm I'm ex- he likes he likes spicy. So I think he'll really enjoy it. Great. Well, thanks so much, Dr. Davis. Always a pleasure. Great to see you. Same here. And thanks all of you for watching another episode of Chef AJ Live. Please come back tomorrow for two shows. At 9 a.m., we have another one of the wonderful Love Life telehealth doctors, Dr. Colin Zhu. I believe he is a DO, isn't he, Dr. Davis? I believe, I believe he is, yes. So you can ask him more questions about that. And he's going to be talking about the Blue Zone, specifically Sardinia. And he's going to be making, he's also a chef, the Sardinian minestrone. And then at 1030, we have Artie Mala with a new line of SOS-free vegan delivery foods that are Indian and they're delicious. Take care of everyone. Yeah, they're good. I wish you lived closer, Dr. Davis. Me 